Hi, this is Eleanor again. Today we will present a little tutorial on how to clean and begin to prepare your fossils. For this, I would like to introduce Dr. Ronnie Mike Leader. He is a professional paleontologist on the fossil project team and he's happy to answer any questions that you might have about anything to do with either fossils or paleontology in general. Right now, we will discuss what to do after you first find a fossil. So, hey Ronnie. Hi, Eleanor. Look at this cool fossil I found. Yeah, that's a what, cool fossil. What do I do with it? Okay, let's find out. Sure. So, what do we have here? So, we do have here um, a fossil shell um, of a mussel, a prehistoric mussel. Um, you can easily see it's a skeleton, but you cannot identify it uh, to a species or genus level because most of the diagnostic features are covered by sediments like sand or clay. So the first thing that we have to do right now is to clean the fossil. That may sound kind of easy, but like you will see, it's not that easy. So because it depends on the fossil, um, is it a solid, rigid fossil or is it a fragile fossil? Um, it depends on is it embedded in the matrix mm -hmm. or not? What kind of matrix is it? And all those cases um, lead us um, to make a decision. What tools do we need to clean the fossil? So we have to decide. And at this point, we need to show you different samples of fossils. And we can guide you through all those different types and show you what kind of tools we need to use. Mm -hmm. So, because this is a kind of rigid fossil, a stable fossil, the simplest way is just to clean it with a pencil or with a brush, a rigid uh, bristle brush. Mm -hmm. So, like that one, you can use a toothbrush or such a brush, and you can clean it under a water flow, rinse of water. And you can easily do this also in field. In this case, we found it at the Calva Cliffs in Maryland. So this is at the ocean front, this is at the beach. Kind of easy, just clean it in the ocean, but you can also do it in a pond or a river, or something like this is around. Okay, now we are here at our lab sink. We just turn on the water and clean our fossil with a customary toothbrush, like this one here. And we scrub all the adherent residues and rinse off everything under the water flow. Um, and because of the sturdy character of the shell, we can do this with some kind of pressure. Um, but still, have to be very carefully not to damage the shell itself, nor to raise some of the important diagnostic features like the hinge with its special teeth. So we do this on both sides. And after that, we do have a very clean and nice fossil. So okay, now we are back. We just cleaned the scallop. You see it's now beautiful, clean. Um, but it's much more difficult when you have to clean a very fragile object, a very fragile fossil. For example, um, fossil leaves that are embedded in a matrix, a clay matrix, this is even harder to clean. Um, for example, you see it here, we have that fossil leaf embedded in that clay, and there might be two situations. So the optimum, the best situation, might be that you just split um, the fossil clay block and you will get the leaf preserved perfectly <laughs> with all the diagnostic features just out of the box. Perfect. Lucky you. Just take it and put it in your collection. <laughs> Excellent. But in most of the cases, it's not like that. In most of the cases, the fossil leaves or parts of the fossil leaf might be covered by sediment, like sheets of clay or sand or mud. And then you have to decide how to get it off. But sometimes the leaves are also covered by other leaves, and you have to decide yeah. which one should I keep. That can and, be very tough. <laughs> right, and which one do I have to uh, take off? So it's not that easy. And you need also very special tools. You cannot act um, with hard tools, with um, stiff brushes, something like that. You need special tools. And because of that, 
um, preparation process is very, very different. Um, we decided uh, to get uh, to give you another tutorial, a special tutorial in leaf preparation or fossil plant preparation. So, so keep tuned for that, um, and and we'll be presenting that at a later time. Right. Okay, but there might also be other fragile objects like gastropods or ammonites. And those shells um, also might um, have preserved mother of pearl or delicate sculptured surface with spines and crest, like you can see here. And you should always treat it, stuff like that very, very carefully. So in this case, don't use a hard bristle brush and don't rinse it underwater. Okay. So all you can do is try to remove um, the sediments or the dust with a very soft um, paintbrush, an artist's paintbrush, and other fine instruments. So it is very important that you take this process slowly and carefully. Mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend for this, I'm always using a scope, like that one that I have here. So with that scope, you can easily follow the pro process step by step, corn by corn, right? Right. However, not everyone has access to a microscope at home, so what do you do in that case? Good point, Eleanor. You're totally right. So, in this case, I always recommend um, people be creative. <laughs> so, sounds funny, but it's like that. You can easily use just a regular magnifying glass, like that one here. It works as well, but you have to make sure that you fix it, that you um, bring it on uh, an arm. So maybe like, something yeah, like this. It might look like this one, right? Because in that way, you are able to use both hands. Yeah. You've got three operation possibilities, right? So, um, and it's also very, very helpful um, that you place your fossil object on a solid surface that it's kind of fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and I recommend using sandbags. So we have one like here. Like we have here, right. Like this. And you can easily place your fossil object, like this gastropod shell, in the middle of the sandbag. Shake it a bit. Push it a bit. And then it's stable, right. And you can use your hands and you don't have to hold it all the time. You still will hold the object when it's under the magnifying glass like this. But that way, you have more possibilities. Right? And if you'd like to do this kind of work frequently, um, you can always purchase either a swan neck or a crane neck style um, magnifier. Like Looks kind this. of like this. <laughs> um, and you can get such items at craft stores like Joanne Fabrics. Right. OK, now we operate under our crane neck magnifying glass. Turn the lights off, spot on. And let's do it. So first, we have to place our fossil object in the middle of the sandbag. In this case, that little shell. We push it into the sandbag till it's kind of stable. Okay, and now we try to remove the adherent sediments out of the shell. Um, and we do this very gently with our artist brush. Um, a little pressure, but not so much, and then just blew the dust and the sediments away. If the sediments are too sticky, then we should use dentist tools, like those here. You can get those from your dentist because he has to replace it um, every couple of weeks. And with those dentist tools, you can easily um, loosen your sediments or the sediments in the shell and then um, you can remove it with the brush. So when you work with the dentist tools you just have to make sure that you don't scratch the surface of your fossil object. Like always be very gentle, not too much pressure. And so sheet by sheet we remove the sediments, clean it with the brush and 
Like you see, now the shell is kind of clean. Um, you also would like to have some special tools, some tiny spatulas um, to do this. But Ronnie, I don't have a spatula that small. I only have the one in my kitchen. Yes, of course, Anna, you're totally right. But we can easily make our own. All we need is an anvil and a hammer, like this one. And if we do not have an anvil, we need two hammer. So we place one hammer at the sandbag and then we just take a nail, a regular nail, like this one, and we just have to flatten the tip to whack it with the other hammer. And that way you can make your own spatula. So you can do this with different kind of nail and different sizes and also use some needles or insect pins and that way you can easily create your own set of different spatulas in different sizes. And then um, you just have to fix it um, at the end of a pan and that way you will get some very useful tools to clean your fossil object. So with our self-made tools, our tiny spatulas, um, it is much easier to clean tiny gaps and very small structures at the surface of your fossil objects. Like you can see here, um, those spines that need to um, be cleaned and the sediments between those spines have to be removed. I use those spatula and a tiny needle, like you see. But you can also use it for other fossil objects, especially um, fossil shark teeth. Um, in fossil shark teeth, you have um, fine, tiny foramina, um, like little pores in the uh, root section, and those are very important diagnostic features, and you have to remove the sediments and the clay out of those foramina. And I use tiny needles and the dentist tool, like you can see here, and step by step, um, you will have a perfect fossil. And it makes it much easier to um, identify your fossil object. But you can also use it um, with bones. Like you can see here, there are also fine structures um, that are covered by sediments. And with those special tools, it's kind of easy to remove the sediments. Okay, now that we have cleaned all our fossils that were covered by sediments and removed all the dust, clay and the mud, I need to tell you that you always have to keep in mind that cleaning fossils is a slow process. There's no rush. These fossils have been in the ground for millions of years and it will take time to clean them properly. So doing it too quickly and messing up is not worth it. Yeah, my parents always called it the quickie demo method and it never works. So it's always good to just take your time when you're working with fossils. Good point. And just think about the smile on your face <laughs> um, when you have a perfect and clean fossil. The time you will have invested is definitely worth it then. So now we've cleaned the fossil leaves and fossil teeth and fossil bones, etc. Um, and so now we'll look at this one, which is giving me a hard time because the fossils and the matrix are pretty much the same thing. You have um, a hard calcite limestone and it's very difficult to get the fossils separated from the limestone without destroying the fossils themselves. Yeah, in this case, we are now reaching the Super Bowl of <laughs> fossil cleaning. Um, and actually, um, we are now entering the realm of fossil preparation, um, which is a whole new story. And we will talk about that um, in an extra tutorial about the real preparation of fossil objects. So that's when we'll start talking about how to use a Dremel tool or other dental tools that actually get you to the point where you're um, separating the fossil from the matrix when it's all hard together, like this case. Right. 
So for now, stay tuned and have fun cleaning your fossils, and please share your experiences with us. And please upload images of your amazing fossils to the website. Now, Ronnie, there is a separate photography tutorial on the website, right? Yes, there is, because we would also like to advise you on how to get good images of your amazing fossils, and um, in the best way possible. Because sharing is what this project is all about, and sharing information and learning from each other is crucial to make this work. And building a community. Yes. Thanks, and see you next time. See ya. Bye.